investment ideas. They're launching a new competition called Trade of the Week, where the best idea gets $5,000. Divya Narendra is the CEO of Sum Zero, a financial idea sharing platform. It's good to see you again. It's been a while. Uh, back with a new contest. So tell us about it. So uh, Interaction Brokers is sponsoring a stock picking contest uh, on Sum Zero, and every week, starting in September, we're going to be giving out $5,000 to uh, the winner of the contest. The uh, requirements are very simple. You have to be a member of Sum Zero, somebody who works um, at an investment firm. Uh, and uh, you can write about any stock, any industry, any geography. Any stock, no matter the size, is there a threshold for market cap? Or we prefer li more liquid names um, versus illiquid names. Obviously, if you're writing about a name with a $100 million market cap, um, and you know, if it doesn't really trade much, uh, you, you probably won't win, win that contest. But uh, it's $130,000 in cash up for grabs um, over a long period of time, and um, members can submit multiple ideas if they want as well. Who, who are the judges? Uh, so it's going to be judged primarily by the Sum Zero team, um, and we're looking at you know both length of analysis or rigor of analysis, um, you know detailed valuation discussion, catalyst risks, all that sort of stuff, um, as well as uh, you know again making sure that the name is at least somewhat liquid so that it's US, actionable. U.S. traded global. Uh, members can write about any stock they want, uh, pretty much I mean, outside the U.S. market as well. Huh. Interesting. Starts uh, in September? In September. So the first uh, eligible ideas will be those posted in the last week of August um, because we need some time for the members to be able to rate the ideas. Uh, so though we ultimately choose the, the winning idea, we take into account what other users have uh, how, how other users have rated those ideas as well as part of our criteria. SumZero.com is how you find out about this? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's switch the conversation um, because I think the conversation is starting to turn when it comes to startups, these unicorns, um, and, and valuations. And you have experience and knowledge of, of what, what's happening in, in Silicon Valley. Quirky, Virtual, Fab.com, Homejoy, Secret, just a number of sort of these startups that have, have gone bust or, or looking to go bust. <laughs> uh, it, it has the tide turned? Are we at an inflection point where some of these valuations have just gotten out of control and now we're seeing sort of the, the fallout? <clears throat> I think um, you know, valuation is always a concern with IPOs because IPOs typically have all kinds of hype associated with them. Um, and I think you're going to see, and we are seeing sort of this dispersion yeah. between you know, maybe the higher quality names that go public maintain the value. I think earlier in the show you mentioned Fitbit um, has been able to sustain its valuation. And then others, like Etsy was brought up, um, you know, Box has struggled, and you've mentioned a couple names as well that have sort of, um, you know, really fallen substantially, mm -hmm. and, you know, lockups expire, and then suddenly everyone's dumping shares left and right. So all this sort of stuff happens. And, you know, I think in general what we're seeing is that whereas, you know, maybe 10 years ago, if, if you were a private company and had a billion-dollar valuation, like, at that point, you're pretty close to going public. Now it seems like even with a $10 billion valuation, you're still a private business. So by the time you do go public, expectations are stratospheric, right? Um, investors are going to want to see not just the user growth and engagement metrics, but they're also going to want to see substantial financial growth and a very clear roadmap towards monetization. Um, and the second, you know, a company sort of missteps, its stock gets smoked. Mm -hmm. you know? So you sort of see that with Twitter. It's probably the biggest, the biggest example of a company that when they went public, it was interesting because, you know, in the press, there's all this, all this talk about how Facebook screwed up their IPO. Twitter got it right um, in terms of evaluation, in terms of the process. Um, but then fast forward, you know, to the next, to the first earnings call, the second earnings call, the third earnings call, and everything reversed. You sure. know? And so, you know, I think anytime expectations get ahead of reality, you're gonna you're gonna see this sort of, um, you know, you're gonna see stocks plummet. Oh. Lastly, I, and then quickly, if you could, you own Tesla. I'm a Tesla huge shares. fan of Tesla. I, okay, so we talked about this, this <laughs> upgrade. The price target today goes to 465. Yeah. Uh, which you know makes people get a little worried about where we are. And it all, I think it's sort of the same conversation we're having, whether it's valuation or stuff like this. Yeah. I mean, I think that the difference between Tesla and a lot of the, these other companies is that their addressable market is so large that you could almost pick a number, you know, and. Uh, you know, it's 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 not a name that I, I personally would trade. I think it's a, sort of a five to ten year time horizon kind of a name because, you know, I think the the sort of general thesis is that everyone should be driving electric cars because electric vehicle technology is in every way better than a gas combustion engine, right? It's 
far simpler to maintain, cheaper to maintain. You get performance gains as well. I mean, people read about ludicrous mode, insane mode, kind of, but it's a function of the powertrain being far superior to that of a gas engine. Um, not to mention sort of the connectivity of the cars, which is what Adam Jonas got to or, or refer, um, you know, referenced in, in the most recent report. Um, and then on top of that, right. you have the entire energy business, which, you know, it's the only car company that's building both the automobile and the energy supply and the distribution of that supply kind of all as, as one kind of unit. I gotta go. It's good to see you again. Good to see you as well. All right, some zeros, Divya Narendra. Steve Leisman has a news alert at the news desk.